Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to an entirely different kind of vehicle, or sorry, video, from what you're probably used to. This is War Thunder 2 Design Bureau. <laughs> so I've had this channel open on my Discord for a while. It's a text channel where I've encouraged people to just share their thoughts on what they would do if they were designing their own tank game. And the title can be a little bit confusing, but I wanted to call it something notable. And people gave a lot of suggestions for how they would change War Thunder, or what they would add to it, or take away from it. And I took away a lot from that conversation. So, I'm making this video, and I'm going to share my own vision of the game that I would like to make. Uh, and... This is just my vision, right? So it's going to be very personal and it's not going to include all of the great ideas that people have been throwing at me, but I will fold in some of the things that you guys came up with and I'd like to use that as a basis for discussion and to see what you guys think. So, link to the Discord, which is the best place to get a hold of me, and there's also the comments section down there. I try to answer every comment as well. You know. The ones that get an answer. <laughs> anyway, what are some of the quirks of this game that I'd like to make? Every game should have something that makes it stand out and really helps to define it in a broad sense. A War Thunder has its historicity. It has a fairly high regard for historical relevance, if not complete accuracy, uh, that takes a uh, second seat to solid gameplay. Well, gameplay. <laughs> anyway, I would go for a minimal UI. One of the things that's really a challenge with any game is nailing the user interface. There are so many things that are tempting to include to give information to players but I'm a huge fan of systems that really try to work in player information into the world and the environment more and get people to focus their eyes on what's happening as opposed to interpreting charts and numbers and graphs and diagrams and interfaces. So I would want to have a user interface that doesn't get in the way as much as possible of what's going on. Something like a gun sight would definitely be important for uh, a tank and other than that I'd like to use as minimalistic a UI as possible. And then probably a mini map would also have to be worked into there somewhere but uh, I've got kind of an idea in my head of how I would do that and it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit risky, but I'd like to see how that works out. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say for now. A minimalistic UI. Next off, another controversial one. I would like to do an art style with the game that's not so focused on realism. War Thunder is 100% based on realism, and I think that works well for War Thunder. It really helps with the historical relevance and getting into the feel of the game and the vehicles, getting into the mode as it were, but I would really prefer something more like you see in an anime style or a cartoon style game. Not that it would be cartoony and not that it would have those uh, quirky hallmarks of anime uh, that, that people tend to get a little bit turned off by, but I really like the artistic style of games like, oh geez, what's the name of it? Valkyria Chronicle. I'm not a huge fan of how they do their storytelling. It's way too wordy. I know, right? Me? Too wordy? But I don't like reading my games. I like playing my games. So I like the art style. I like the way they have a simplistic presentation that conveys information effectively. I don't like things like glowing weak spots, 
so I wouldn't have that. I don't like the vignette that they have in that game. If you don't know what Valkyria Chronicle is, it's pretty easy to find out what that game looks like by looking at a little bit of gameplay footage. And again, you have to get through all of the the Japanese RPG trash. <laughs> Just a bunch of dialogue and character establishment, conversations, backstory, all of it just thrown at you. Walls and walls of text like you're at the Vietnam Memorial uh, only in an anime. And again, it's kind of a tragic thing, in my opinion, to put all that between a player and the experience. But, it's, uh, you know, it's more of a personal preference. So, a simplistic art style, a minimalistic UI, um, not the natural look, but a simplified look, right? Glass, or sorry, grass doesn't have to be rendered one blade of grass at a time. Um, it could be, you know, a clump, if you were, if you will. Uh, something like you might see, again, in a cartoon. It conveys the idea of something without having to simulate that thing in a visual sense and that really frees up a lot of resources but that is going to immediately turn some people off and the important thing with that style is to nail the look of the vehicles and the effects effects that look good but not cartoony would be nice again simple style but not like kaboom in big text when you shoot your gun as tempting as that would be i think that's been overdone and vehicles that are distinct, that you can identify exactly what it is from the way it looks, but it looks a little bit more like a drawing than it looks like a photograph. And that saves a lot of time and resources both in development and on your computer. What else? Customization. I feel like that's really important. I love the decals system in War Thunder. Uh, the decorations, I don't know, they're kind of hit or miss, especially the bushes. I think bushes never should have been added to War Thunder. Not only do they hide your vehicle, but they're not fair. Some vehicles you can completely cover with bushes. Uh, the four packs of bushes are no longer available because they were overpowered. So the people who bought those just have an advantage over everyone else. And uh, that's part of a much larger issue with War Thunder that I'll probably talk about later. Uh, but that's that. Customization would definitely be one of those things I'd like to include. And some things that are in War Thunder I wouldn't include in this game that I'll give the working title of War Thunder 2. Obviously, that's not going to be its title. But every idea needs a working title until the real one presents itself. And so that's what I'm going to go with for now. War Thunder 2 Electric Anime Boogaloo. <laughs> anyway, what do I want in the game? So these are some things that I'd like to have, but if they don't work out, that's okay. One of the some of the things I want in the game, I want look here mechanics, and that ties in with the simplistic art style and the minimal UI, and that is that every aspect of the game that the player sees would take into account where you're looking and to make it simple and to encourage people to have their eyes in the right place at the right time. One of the deals with War Thunder, to use it as an example, is that situational awareness can be really tough and one of your best advantages is sound in the game. You can't be looking everywhere at once, but you can listen for things like cannon fire, anti-aircraft fire, engine sounds, aircraft sounds, explosions, and of course whenever those sounds get changed up then the player experience changes as well. So that soundscape frees up your eyes to focus on what's important, but what do you need to look at? You've got a map 
you've got a mini map unless you're in an aircraft and then you don't have a mini map which I think can be a problem I'd love to see customizable UI in War Thunder where you could uh, turn down the opacity of things like you could see through your mini map how cool would that be to have a little see-through mini map in the bottom of your screen when you're in an aircraft that would be very helpful especially in mixed battles anyway I digress <laughs> it's late I'm tired but I really have been looking forward to making this video so what are these look here mechanics Again, it's more of a broad concept. You don't want to overwhelm people with all of these things happening. Uh, the thing I immediately think of is um, Korean RPGs and a lot of Asian uh, video games, especially RPGs, will have big flashing numbers and huge, broad, sparkly, dynamic effects on screen characters moving around all at the same time it just uh just like i call it puke <laughs> there's just this colorful puke all over the screen constantly happening like uh an explosion in a glitter bomb factory and uh i i hate it because <laughs> i don't know what to focus on and what you end up doing is ignoring 95% of what's on the screen and only focusing on what you need to. You learn to ignore most of that stuff. So it's completely pointless to include most of that stuff because it's not even being paid attention to anyway. It's a distraction and I don't find it appealing. Again, personal taste on the last part, but you probably get what I mean. You don't want to have a bunch of stuff popping up. Like you could, you could make it to where if you shoot a tank, then this magical camera appears in the top right of your screen and shows you everything that's happening after that round contacts the enemy tank. But do you need to? I'm kind of, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. This is something that's super worked into War Thunder and I would never take it out of War Thunder. But if I made a game, if I made a tank game, would I include that? Probably no. I think it would be better to give some kind of visual indication of generally what's happening to that enemy vehicle when the round hits it, right at where the round hits it. You get what I'm saying? Maybe if you blow out someone's engine with your shot, you just see a brief explosion around where their engine compartment would be, right? Blam! Smoke and, and, you know, whatever. Bits of shrapnelized armor and engine parts and bolts go flying out the back of their tank as it, the engine turns over two more times and coughs out some pistons. You know, something fun like that. Uh, and yet, you know, okay, blam, you know, some bolts flew out of the back of their engine, and now there's fire, just fireballed out the back there. I must have hit their engine. Alternatively, you see the round impact their tank. It splashes right into the crew compartment, and uh, <laughs> one of the crewman's hatches pops open, right? And you see their their driver just start limping out of the vehicle of course nobody dies in this game either no pixels are harmed in the making of this game and so you know oh i took out their driver right where you actually see him bail out of the vehicle i think that would be pretty neat at the same time you could you could have that work for anything right cannon barrel that's pretty easy to figure out right and uh, transmission, same kind of idea. So I think that could be really fun. Maybe it's better to give someone immediate visual feedback on what's happening at the point of impact instead of training them to look up at the top right of their screen to see what's going on. Just a thought. Eyeballs do move fast, so it's probably not too much of an issue. Anyway, what else? You get the idea. There's a lot of neat little fine-tuning that can be done with that concept. 
and to the extent that it's applied well, it can really make for an immersive experience, even with a simpler sort of art style. Maybe I lost my place a little bit. What else do I want in the game? Uh, I'd like historical reference. So, what do I mean by that? I would like vehicles to be immediately recognizable. That if you know, uh, you know, different models of Sherman tank from history, you'll go, "Oh, that's an Easy Eight with the long 75." 76 millimeter cannon if you, if you really know your stuff anyway um, <laughs> or oh that's a firefly you know you can tell immediately based on your knowledge of history but would I represent every single nation as that nation um I'll probably talk about that later but it wouldn't necessarily be a copy of real history I like framing things in a way that it can be its own story. So if you want to diverge from history, then it's a little bit more comfortable to do that. But at the same time, all the stuff is drawn from real historical events and such. Anyway, what else? I'd like to see a commander mode like you have in some of the Battlefield games. Battlefield 2142 is one of my favorite games of all time. As far as how they accomplished things, uh, it was really well done in terms of the game mechanics. I didn't so much like the look of the game, but uh, I feel like they nailed the walkers. Other than that, um, the commander mode was fantastic. The most experienced players would take first um, priority in being able to be the commander and the most experienced commanders would take first priority and after that it just came down to who was available and you would spend the majority of your time assisting and coordinating people instead of engaging in the nitty-gritty of a battle and I really really enjoyed that and you see a little bit of that in world war mode implemented not super well and not on a battle by battle basis. It's more of a of a force commander than it is a battle commander, if that makes any sense. What else? And again, uh, there's plenty you can get out of looking at the battlefield games and figuring out what they're all about if uh, if you're not familiar with that battlefield 2142 being the best <laughs> battlefield 3 wasn't bad either anyway single player campaign i would really like to have a solid single player campaign uh to compare this to war thunder gaijin has always been terrible at making campaigns all of their games have garbage campaigns they're just not polished and that's something <laughs> something is rather consistent uh, about games by that company but it's a totally different method that they use and it works for them and they wind up with the game that just happens to be my favorite game of all time so it's not like they're doing it wrong I would just do it differently and that would take a good amount of work and that also folds in to uh, a concept that I have with something else. One of the best crafted experiences that I've played in the form of an MMO is Warframe. I really always have enjoyed playing that game. Uh, it's just not, I mean, Ninja Robots in Space is super fun, but it's not always my thing. I, I think I like tanks and airplanes more, just as a general concept. So I, I would draw a lot of the player experience from Warframe and fold it into my game. One of the things that Warframe has is several campaigns that are very well crafted that establish characters early on and carry and develop them as you go. Uh, the missions and the campaigns unlock new experiences and abilities and capabilities for your character as well as opening up the world to you and introducing you to the mechanics of the game even the multiplayer aspects of it and the entire thing can be enjoyed 
in a solo or a multiplayer experience and that is perfectly nailing uh, the way I'd like to experience a game and so I'd like to work as much of that as I can into the game that I dream about making but that's a big subject and it's something that has to be focused on throughout the entire development of a game to be handled well so no real way to describe how to accomplish that other than to set that as your goal and measure how you're following along with it so what would this game need it would need to have responsive and consolidated controls that's something you see generally well done in war thunder less so with the control consolidation but that also works into something else that I'll mention ideally this is a game that you could comfortably play on a mouse and keyboard without contorting yourself or binding a bunch of keys to shift plus this or control plus this or alt plus this or whatever weird contortions you have to do with your fingers it'd be nice to have about uh, a dozen keys you regularly press or less as well as the axis that you control with your mouse and that's probably not asking too much if the game isn't super complicated in some other regards and the fact that the controls are responsive uh, you always want to get the effect that you expect out of your input instead of doing something like mash go on left track and your tank doesn't move <laughs> or pressing uh, forward on your BT5 and only one track engages. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's a feature. It's been in the game for as long as the BT5 has been in the game and for all variants of it and it's annoying as hell. <laughs> what do you expect is to go? Not to traverse left. Anyway. What else do we have? 3D assets. So this is a game that would at least need to be designed with three-dimensional space in mind and that takes more work and uh, a lot of tuning, tweaking, designing, and making it happen. And along with that, realistic physics. So it doesn't have to be a simulation. I'd like to simplify things as much as possible just so that they can run well. That's one of the issues we see with War Thunder is they try to have simulation level physics and interactions, but things start getting really weird, especially with stuff like the hole break mechanic, hit detection, um, the way that guided missiles work, the way that radar lock works, uh, as well as radar detection, both from air and ground radar, ground to air, air to ground, air to air, <laughs> ground to ground. There's so much that needs tuning and tweaking and doesn't function well reliably or consistently from patch to patch just because of how complicated it is. That's an aspect of War Thunder that's always going to be there because that's how the game is... That's, that's the focus of the game, is that they try to actually simulate a lot of those interactions and systems. I would go for a step below that in terms of fidelity to increase reliability. So I would expect things like projectile ballistics to be very predictable and very close to what you would see in a real world interaction but rendered in the simplest form that accomplishes that in other words you don't have to know exactly the the shape of the projectile deformation that happens when a 37 millimeter um, armor piercing cap ballistic cap round impacts a 30 millimeter frontal plate of a panzer II. <laughs> only a few things need be known and war thunder measures that and a little bit more and uh 
I guess that's all I have to say about that for now. Simple as possible, but exactly what you would expect if you've seen things like that happen in real life or in videos or whatever. So what would the not what would the game not have? Uh, it would not have complete historical accuracy. I don't care. People get too caught up in that. People get all up about alternative history and people argue about what did happen or what would happen or what could have happened. And I would just frame the game as uh, it's red versus blue get over it <laughs> so uh, I would probably have like two or three major factions in the game and everything just kind of gets represented within that sphere and then I'd like to tell a story with the game as well but uh, that's something of a long process in other words it's not alternative history it's not history it's just non historical. We're telling a story, we're using historical vehicles to tell that story. What else? It is not pay for power. There's no pay to win. <laughs> There's no paying for an advantage over another player. And there's no paying for an advantage over the AI. <laughs> There's other things you can do with your money. Don't worry, I'll still get your money. <laughs> so, monetization. I would draw heavily from Warframe. If this is going to be an MMO style game or a free to play style game, and that's, you know, a decision to be made at some point, um, then I would really like to monetize things like skipping the grind. So you could make progress faster on things like unlocking vehicles or unlocking cosmetics right when they come out. And then what Warframe does is you can grind for everything. You might not be able to grind for everything at any given moment. So there's events and things. And they have what's called the Prime Vault where a certain Prime or a certain selection of fancy Warframes will be available for grinding for during a certain period of time and then uh, every what is it month or two or three then a new series of fancy Warframes and cosmetics become available and that old series is locked away for a while so that gives you a reason to keep coming back to the game over time just uh, to see what's available and to get excited about what's coming up next it also sets your expectations you know that within a certain amount of time it's going to be coming around again uh, it gives you a time limit on how long you have to unlock those things so you know if you're making progress quickly enough and it also gives me the opportunity to sell you a key or whatever that unlocks whatever portion of that content immediately that you might be super eager to get your hands on without even playing the game to unlock it. So I think that works fantastically well. It makes plenty of money for uh, Digital Extremes, the developers and publishers of Warframe, and it is the best form of monetization I've ever seen. I'd love to use that in my game. And at the same time, again, you have the opportunity to unlock everything in the game just by playing the game. What else? Minimal RNG. If anything can be modeled without pulling out a random number, that's what I would prefer to do. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I far prefer to do well than to get lucky. The only time getting lucky is fun is when you're is when you know you're gambling and when it's just for fun. And that is fun. You know, spin the wheel, watch the lights flash, maybe win something. Sometimes that's fun, but uh, it makes a bad profession. 
makes a very bad profession. And yes, I play games like it's my job. And uh, finally, even though this is not summing up this conversation yet, there are some things, some little mechanics in War Thunder that I would not like to see in my game. So my game would be like War Thunder, but it would not have any wing ripping. Uh, and the same goes for landing gear and flaps to a certain extent. I don't want, you know, a, a specific airspeed where the entire landing gear just tears off. Um, I would just have the landing gear not deploy at that speed. Same with flaps. I wouldn't have the flaps tear off at a certain speed. I would just have them uh, be forced to undeploy. There's no there's no benefit to the player in removing those things because you used them at a bad time. There isn't a benefit to your opponents <laughs> if those things are removed. Uh, but I think the world would be fine without flaps ripping off and landing gear ripping off because of airspeed. Uh, in a rough landing, could a landing gear collapse? Yeah, I'd be fine with that. But I'd also like to see things like tires popping before that happens. Uh, what else? Uh, no wing rip. No wing rip because of high speed. Uh, it'd be sort of like you have an arcade where you get to a max airspeed and you just are not able to exceed that. So your plane just wouldn't uh, dive any harder or whatever. And that also deals with some issues where players will intentionally crash their aircraft. Um, that can be recognized a lot more easily as an intentional crash if it's not even possible to overspeed the aircraft. And again, that does take away some of the realism, but the way that wings rip off in War Thunder is not realistic anyway. So <laughs> it's just a matter of where do you want the game to start and simulation to end. What else? Less focus on PvP and better balance there. So once more, I've used the example of Warframe. It really is a game that's worth looking into if you're not familiar with it at all. I've spent a huge amount of time there and the only reason I'm not playing it now is I just like tanks and airplanes and helicopters and even a little bit of naval air naval uh, vessels every now and then more than I like ninjas in space as much as I like ninjas in space and one of the things Warframe does is as I mentioned before it focuses on a story that uh, engages an individual player from the start and can carry you through literally hundreds upon hundreds of hours of gameplay by yourself and you can also include as many people in your multiplayer network as you're comfortable with between uh, the groups of players in individual matches, which are focused entirely on PvE, that's basically players against the computer, and uh, when there is PvP in Warframe, it's much, much less focused on being just the most powerful person there is and uh, in my game I would put the, the story of the game and the single player experience and the cooperative experience before the PvP experience if you want to play PvP God bless it you're also going to find that you don't have an advantage over people that have just started playing the game or that have just unlocked a vehicle, except that you know what you're doing. And that means nothing like the modules you need to research to make a vehicle usable. Uh, it's an absolute crime <laughs> that War Thunder makes you grind for built-in modules like night vision devices 
and the ability to fire the kinds of rounds that tank would bring into combat, uh, defensive smoke, all kinds of stuff that just should not have to be researched. Don't even get me started on parts and FPE. So, all of that would just be available from the start. It wouldn't even be an issue for PvP in my game. And you wouldn't have any crew skills that would give you an advantage over someone who just started the game or looking at it from their perspective, a massive disadvantage. Uh, I mean, the reload rate difference between someone with a, a maxed out crew and someone with a level zero crew or level one crew, whatever it is, in War Thunder is just ridiculous. You really expect someone who just started playing the game that day to not only face off against players who have been playing for thousands and thousands of hours, but also to just have a vehicle that performs 20, 30, 40% less effectively than their opponent. That's that's not cool. That's not cool. And uh, unfortunately, that's part of how Gaijin monetizes their game. They followed the example of the more evil companies <laughs> in how to make a buck in a free-to-play experience and uh, offering people, or sorry, creating an environment that frustrates people and at the same time offering relief if they will pay for relief. Those are the actions of a madman, my friend. <laughs> I want to be good, and I want to make a game that's good too, so none of that bullshit. What else? Creative world and setting. So again, I want to tell a story. I want to tell a new story with old stuff. I think that makes sense. I always loved playing with Little Green Army Men and building my block forts when I was a kid. And that's exactly the kind of stuff I'd like to do with my video game. Tell a new story using old stuff. I like the sound of that. And as I've mentioned, lots of inspiration from Warframe. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm actually reading off of some notes here. So sorry if I repeat myself a little bit. I've already mentioned that I'd want to have two to three major factions. I kind of like the idea of having two major factions and then one that's like a wild card that could join either side. Uh, but I don't know how I would do that. Again, Warframe pulls it off very nicely. You've got the Tenno, who are the player characters and such. You have the Lotus, who is Space Mom. And uh, everybody trusts implicitly she starts you off along your journey and uh there's there's probably nothing wrong with space mom right is space mom okay why doesn't space mom love me uh and then you have your antagonist and their faction you've got the grenier who are like your uh your your space soviets <laughs> and also clones and uh ugly as all get out just like a good Soviet tank and you've got your uh, some sort of money grubbing faction you might call them capitalists but they kind of seem like euro trash uh, what's their faction called the the Ke I can't remember they've got a name anyway you get the idea you've got these factions that have their flavor and their pizzazz and their own agendas and their story weaves together to work into the world of the game in a way that engages you and gives you something to, to think about and to wonder about and to fantasize about when you're not playing or as you're unlocking the story, you're figuring out how things really be and how they evolve and how they do. And that's one of the advantages in not basing something off of historical reality is that you create this fantasy world that people can get invested in and they don't know what came before and they don't know what's coming next. 
Unless you live in the Soviet Union, of course. In Soviet Union, even the past is uncertain. But that's a little bit of a digression. So, what else? Uh, as I mentioned, a dedicated PvE campaign with daily, hourly, and monthly events. I didn't really talk about that, but I talked about how Warframe has the vault. They also have things uh, that are basically pop-up events that are like alerts. And there's no such thing as alerts in War Thunder. I think that's something that's really lacking, honestly. But I'd want to have a world that you unlock more of as you progress through the game. And of course, each one of the areas could be a different map where uh, battles are happen or where missions are. And uh, you would come back to those areas as you do with Warframe if say an alert pops up and you can find a rare tank part or some resource that you need to get a hold of uh, and there it is for the next hour and a half that special mission is available or you know this week this spot is the hot spot and you go there and you do missions there and oh this month uh, this thing is available available to be unlocked and it's not going to be available for another year unless we get it now. So things that uh, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, it's giving you something to look forward to and setting your expectations and getting you to keep moving in the game. And of course, that's something that takes time and crafting but when it all comes together, it makes a very enjoyable experience. Talked about the simpler graphics, not realistic, but expressive. You show what you need to show in a way that conveys the information and is not hard on the eyes either. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And here's a big one. Four things that are coming to the game. I'd want to have a constant dev version of the game available and that would be just things that are in development can be tested there by the community by whoever wants to test them and just like the dev server with war thunder it's understood that those things could be changed any moment but unlike the dev server with war thunder it would actually be for developing the game and not just for hyping up things before a major update comes out. So it would always be open to anyone who wants to run that client and they could test things that are coming to the game and then things would actually get tested by a large number of people for free! <laughs> Gaijin, why are you not doing this? You don't need to keep your secrets. You suck at keeping secrets anyway we would far prefer less surprise and a more stable experience and that's exactly what i would offer to players of my game fun paper vehicles there's another thing that i would include vehicles that are fun vehicles that didn't exist and you don't have to stress out about it because again everything's going to be balanced don't worry and uh, I wouldn't include anything that breaks the game or ruins people's experience. Well, I mean, depending upon who you are. Some people are just going to have a bad day. That's their problem, not mine. But uh, because, again, this is not a game that is meant to represent real history, we could have something fun. You can probably think of some things that are fun, but I immediately thought of the uh, the tank from Metal Slug, which I don't think would really fit into my game, <laughs> but uh, things like that are just fun, you know? Anyway, Idlevice from uh, Valkyria Chronicle also comes to mind. What else? I talked about having uh, simplified mechanics, ergo the simplest equation that accomplishes a feel of realism and reliable feedback and input. 
less of all this data calculation, especially server side uh, data handling and calculation like we see with War Thunder. A lot of the data in War Thunder is handled server side and that's why you get things like ghost rounds and that's why you, you will always get things like ghost rounds because internet connections are always going to drop or mishandle data and uh, War Thunder's formulas are more complicated than they absolutely have to be. At least, in my opinion. Especially, especially for a game that's slightly less realistic than War Thunder, uh, you could simplify a lot of the data and save everybody a lot of hassle. Make the game a lot more consistent and responsive. And I also already talked about how every vehicle would always have its best possible performance from the moment you unlock it, at least in PvP. Maybe there could be fun things you could unlock and add to your vehicles like, I don't know, the Calliope rocket launcher for your M4. <laughs> but only available outside of PvP. Unless it's always available in PvP. And then it would be cool. And I would also, to wrap things up for reals this time, I would make the game like War Thunder in that players grind to unlock content. I feel like that's essential. And I really also feel like the player engagement issue that I sort of touched on by comparing my game to Warframe, which I think absolutely nails player engagement. War Thunder does not perfectly nail player engagement, in my opinion. You don't always get excited every day about playing the game. <laughs> At least, I don't. And uh, especially when it comes to things like hourly tasks is where War Thunder really falls short. Uh, you could get excited about your daily tasks, you could get excited about unlocking things like decals, but uh, that wears off pretty fast. The alert system really, really works well for Warframe, where you've got these things popping up every few minutes that you could decide to jump in on and get some fun little reward. That's a good call. And uh, a lot of the content of the game needs to be unlocked slowly over time just to keep people interested and to have something you're able to give to people. Because uh, if you give your kids all the candy on day one, then there's nothing left in the Halloween bucket for day two. And you have very unhealthy and also sad kids the next day. It would also focus on a variety of vehicles, at least ground and air. I love combined arms. It's a blast. I love having the option to tackle a situation from the ground or from the air, air to air or air to ground, ground to air, ground to ground. Fun stuff. Really like it. Very engaging mentally and dynamic and I feel like it could really be nailed especially well by a simplified, streamlined game that's finely crafted and well balanced. And yes, I understand, that's a huge challenge. <laughs> and the last thing, like War Thunder, in that each vehicle feels unique and of course, I'm not talking about War Thunder's copy and paste habits that they've gotten into. Shame on you. That's a bad War Thunder. That's a no. You go to your room. You go to your room and you think about what you've done. That's lazy. That's a bad War Thunder. <laughs> anyway, with that, I'll cut it off for today. I really enjoyed making this video and I have a lot of editing to do to turn this into something that's watchable but hopefully you enjoyed listening to me just fantasize about my perfect game, and I completely expect 
nobody to completely agree with me on what the best version of this game is. And I expect to be wrong on some of these things. So I really look forward to hearing from you. And again, this is just for fun. Anyway, catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.